31, let's take a look at example five. This time I have three pieces, okay? And I've got to graph this function. So I have a parabola, I have a constant function, and I have your square root function. And all of these are basic toolkit functions. This is your y equals x squared. This is your constant. This is your basic root function. So all of those toolkit functions um, are, are displayed out in your book and they show you their basic graphs, their basic formulas, and recently enough they showed you their domains and ranges. So let's do a quick sketch of each of, each of these. I want to look at f of x equaling x squared. Okay, I'm going to try and make this a little bit smaller than we did in example four because now I have three of them I need to graph out. So y equals x squared is my basic parabola. I'm not even going to label and scale. I'm just going to draw a picture. All right, it looks something like that. Let's think about f of x equaling negative 2. All right, this is a constant function. All right, so let me go ahead and draw that in. So when I say this is a constant function, this would be a horizontal line at y equaling negative 2. So it's down here by about 2 units. All right, and last but not least, we have the square root function. Now, this has a radical in it, so we do have a little bit of a domain issue. I need my radicand to be positive, and that means the stuff under the radical has to be positive because my index is 2, which is an even number. So I'm going to start when x is 0, and it's going to look something like this. All right, these are your basic toolkit functions. So I've got my parabola, my constant, and my root. And now let's look at the cutoffs. It looks like our domains are being cut off at an x value of negative 1 and an x value of 4. So I'm going to draw negative 1 on the first two of these graphs. And I only need it on the first two because the negative 1 doesn't play a role in the root x. All right, so if I was going to do x equaling negative 1, it would be something like this. Okay. And it barely looks like x equaling negative 1. Let me erase that. Okay, so this is saying I would like the left half of the parabola. So I will take that part of the parabola. Now, like I said, it's always good to plug these numbers into your functions to see where you would have been. So if I plug negative 1 in, negative 1 squared would be positive 1. So this is the ordered pair, negative 1, 1. I'll keep that in mind. If I plug negative 1 into my constant function, this would be the ordered pair, negative 1, 2. Okay, so those are just ordered pairs to help me with my graph. The next x value I need to cut off is an x value of 4. And I'll pretend 4 is about here somewhere. All right. Let me just go a little bit smaller just so I have room for it. Actually, give me a moment. Let me erase this. This negative 1, 1 is getting in my way. I still want that ordered pair there. I'm just going to write it on the other side. So this ordered pair was negative 1, 1. That just gives me a little bit more space. So let's try this. If I was going to pretend x was equal to 4. Oh, actually, and as I think about it, I don't need to worry about x equaling 4 on this top graph. I only need it on the middle one and the bottom one. So all my eraser work, not even worth it. I didn't need to worry about it. All right, sweet. So let's take a look x equaling 4. I think this is about x equaling 4 in here.
All right, so for this constant function, the middle piece I want is right in here. And again, this would be the ordered pair four, negative two. Oh, and I just realized this should have said negative one, negative two. I am making all sorts of typos here, but we got negative one, negative two, okay. And then this would be the ordered pair. If I plug four in, this would be four, two. All right, and because I have x greater than or equal to four, I would like the right piece of that graph. So I have my left piece, my middle piece, and my right piece. I need to take all three of these pieces and then just put them onto one graph. So here we go. We'll go y's and x's. I'm gonna go 10 and 10. And let's see what we're doing. I need to go to negative one, one, and I'm gonna be drawing a parabola. Now, as you see, I already see another slight typo. I see this is x is strictly less than one, not less than or equal to, so I should be putting an open dot. All right, and I need to draw the left half of that parabola, so that would be negative two, four, and then three, oops, negative two. Gosh, I am having a good, this is a fun Saturday night for me. So we got negative two, four, and then I need negative three, and I need to go up to nine. And that is the left half of that parabola, or the left piece. The next thing I need to do, now I'll keep in mind that both of these um, less than symbols, neither of them have an equal sign, they're strictly less than, so I'm gonna use open dots. I'm gonna go from negative one, negative two, to four, negative two, and I want that constant function in there. Okay, and then I wanna to go to four, two. Now I do have greater than or equal to here, so I will finally put in a closed dot. Um, I know that if I plugged nine in, I would get three back out, so let me use that as another guide mark. And there we go, okay. So that is my piecewise function. And again, I wanted the left piece of the parabola the middle piece of the constant function, and the right piece of the root function. And if you are having fun with this, which I'm sure you are, because I'm sure it's fun for you on this Saturday night, or I don't know when you're watching this, it might not be Saturday night. But anywho, I just wanna go over domain and range, just cause. My domain, you can see I go left forever, but then there's an open dot at negative one. So I do not have a y value there, but then I hop right back on. I'm going from negative one to four. There's an open dot here, but a closed one here, so I don't have to worry about it. And then I go right forever. So my domain is negative infinity to negative one, and then negative one to infinity. The only x value where I don't have a y value is at negative one, and that's because you saw there were no equal to symbols here. Now the range is gonna be more interesting. Let's take a look at what the range is equal to. So as I'm going down to up, you see the first y value I hit is negative two. But it's not an interval, it's just the number, negative two, so I'm gonna put it in those squigglies, right? And then the next y value I get closest to two is here at one, but it's got an open dot. So I'm gonna go one, and then you can see this goes on up forever. Even though this is the ordered pair for two, and this was one, one, right? This was a lower y value than this one, so this one takes precedent. So we're going from one all the way to infinity. And just so we have all these ordered pairs here, here they were. All right, these were some important points when graphing this function. All right, and again, if you want to, you could graph this on your graphing calculator. I don't know that it's worth it, um, it, it might not be worth it with all the, the buttons you have to push on there. It might just be easier to graph these three pieces one at a time. All right, we got one more question and then we'll be wrapping up this section. I'll see you in a few, gang. Bye.